Nice to see all of you. Uh, I'm going to talk about Web 2.0. How many of you, let me see a show of hands, how many of you even have an idea what Web 2.0 is? You have a pretty good idea. Where did that word come from, Web 2.0? Well, actually, it's a little bit of jargon that came out of a technology conference back in 2004. A guy named uh, Tim O'Reilly was sponsoring this conference, and he described how the web had changed from being Web 1.0, which was essentially a read-only uh, web, into an interactive social meeting place uh, called Web 2.0. So what I'm going to talk about, I'm not going to talk about the social aspect of the web necessarily because Andy's going to do that. I'm going to focus on tools, uh, web apps that have come about that uh, really enliven classroom instruction. So my talk is going to be basically about that. So running in the background right now is a web tool called Prezi. Have you ever seen Prezi before? or maybe did and didn't know what it was. So the cool thing about this kind of presentation software is I don't need to have a special machine to make this kind of a presentation. It's on the web. It's in the cloud. I don't have to worry about having a flash drive and moving my files from one place to another. All I have is a web address for this particular presentation, and I can share it with whomever I wish. So that's one of the big advantages of Web 2.0 tools. So I'm going to stop this little uh, fly through right now. But you'll notice that this is a lot more dynamic looking than the PowerPoint slide. Something's always moving. And this generation of learners, as you may know, spend about three hours a week gaming. And so if you can get their attention by zooming through things and moving things around, so much the better. You'll get their attention, and they will pay attention to the content. So you kind of have to slide the content in under the table. So I'm going to let me uh, stop this right now. <clears throat> Originally, I had decided to do my presentation on another tool. This is called Spicy Nodes. Now, don't think that way. This is Spicy Nodes. Is uh, a, it's called a node map. It makes a a node map, and you could use this, this particular tool, also a Web 2.0 tool. It resides on the web. It has a web address. I can send any of you to see this, this, uh, this particular presentation. In fact, I'll share this link with you later. Uh, but what's really cool about it is it's dynamic as, as well. So for example, under presentation tools, if I click on that, <clears throat> I can enlarge the picture that's here. And, show the uh, old guy trying to look behind the picture, right? And then each one of these is a link to a website that has a Web 2.0 tool. So is this something that you think you might want to use in a classroom? Well, you really should consider it because it's free. It doesn't cost you anything. You just sign up, and it's a, a free service, and you can create uh, as many uh, spicy node uh, node maps as you wish. So each one of these goes to a different uh, website. So that's Spicy Nodes, a Web 2.0 tool. And then <clears throat> right now we're going to go visit Easly, e e -A -S dot L Y. And Easly is a way of making a Web 2.0 infographic. And th this is a cool little video that shows you probably a whole lot uh, more completely than I could. And I want you to notice this.
Uh, one of the great things about Easily is that you can create a poster, you can email it, you can download it as a PDF and actually print it out, or you can send an address and have somebody view it online. So that's one of the great things about Web 2.0 tools is that no longer are you a slave to software that's loaded on your computer. You can do all of these, there's great uh, uh, programs out there that allow you to do all sorts of things. And in fact, uh, science is using easily right now for sixth, seventh, and eighth grade science to do part of their uh, uh, student projects in their curriculum bundles. Uh, how many of you know about Poll Everywhere? Yeah. This is, this is a cool tool. I really like it. And plus that, it has a demo video that is, this guy is really, really funny. So I'm going to show you that one. Then I'll quit with the videos. So you're giving a presentation, and you want to get some feedback from your audience. Show of hands, how many of you have signed up for office hours? One, two, four, two, three. That's not very accurate. Both voting methods take far too long, and expensive voting systems like this one, well, they're difficult to set up and don't allow for audience comments. Hello? Oh, oh, oh. Introducing Poll Everywhere. Through a simple web interface, Poll Everywhere lets you collect instant audience feedback. Just type in a question, and your audience can respond using laptops, tablets, or even mobile phones. Even your crappy flip phone. Hey guys, <laughs> what do you think of my presentation so far? Is it A, amazing, B, incredible, amazing, or C, not that great? To respond, just text message the number on screen. Or use a custom URL to respond in the web app. You can even use Twitter if that's what you're into. As people respond, results are embedded instantly into your presentation in real time. Seriously, guys? You can also ask open-ended questions. What is your favorite part of my outfit? So how many of you have uh, campuses that have those handheld student response systems? And how much do they cost? A lot, right? Guess what? This costs nothing. It's free. All you need is a cell phone or a computer lab. And so you don't, and it's always available. The free account allows up to 40 responses. So you could use it all in a regular classroom. Most classes aren't over 40. So for free, you could have you, your student response system ready to roll. And you can change the multiple choice questions, open-ended questions, uh, text, any kind of uh, answers that you want are available. The next tool that I want to show you is called, actually there are two tools that kind of do the same thing. Uh, one is called Blabberize. You saw this uh, showcased in Sherita Martin's uh, presentation this morning. Remember Sherita Martin had uh, um, Martin Luther King and a kid had drawn, a kid from Bliss had drawn a little uh, picture and she'd photographed it and she put a little animated mouth on it and it was telling the biography of Martin Luther King. Do you recall that? Okay. Well, th this is Blabber Eyes. And so, actually, this one's pretty funny too. Welcome to BlabberWise.com, the only internet site that you can upload a picture. <laughs> Select the mouse on that picture, and then record some sound. And this is what we get crazy. We make that picture talk to the sound. A talking picture. I'm not kidding. This is real. Okay? When we show it to people for the first time, they hear a boom inside their head. They are so amazed. They are like, hi, I just heard a boom inside my head. And I'm like, yeah, that's right, buddy. That's us blowing your mind, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty funny. Yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. 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 Yeah
pretty funny. But stop and think about this in terms of your ELL population. In order to make one of these things, uh, you, number one, you have to write a script. And then number two, you have to record your voice. So you've got oral reading and writing combined into one project. And the great thing is, because these are Web 2.0 tools, you can get an embed code and put it on a teacher web page. So the parents can see it and play the student product at will. So that's another really cool advantage. The next tool that I'm going to show you is sort of the same thing. This is Vokey. Vokey is an animated avatar. And the only trouble I see with Vokey is getting kids to move off of trying to find their perfect avatar, right? Uh, <clears throat> just for example, if I, I roll the dice here, the, you just roll the dice and then you come up with another, come on, it didn't change. Anyhow, so the av there's a whole bunch of avatars from, from cats to people to aliens, there's all sorts of things. But the cool thing about this is you can uh, have it call your cell phone and record your voice. Uh, you can do text, uh, which sort of sounds like Stephen Hawking, right? <laughs> or you can use the microphone that's built into your computer and make a recording. So uh, it's, it, again, and you share it, you publish it, you share it, it's on the web, it's there. All you need is the embed code, and again, it will play on the website, right? So kind of a cool thing. I, uh, I created uh, a Vokey to show you that it does have instructional value. Um, this guy that's coming up right now, I recorded my own voice trying to remember my physics. And so I found it quite randomly. Found, by the way, you can change the hair color, the skin color, the background. All of those things can be changed. When so, an object is dropped from some height, a heavy object and a light object will always hit the ground at the same time. Many times students confuse uh, the pull of gravity with that of inertia. The large object has more inertia and takes longer to get going than the light object, but the acceleration of gravity finally catches up and they both hit the ground at the same time. Okay. All right. And so you can see those two tools are really powerful ways that kids can connect language and animation. Typically, what, what I see in high schools is an immigrant population coming in that is reluctant to interact. And so these kinds of tools uh, allows them to interact in, a, in kind of a non-threatening way. And it makes them put a lot more effort into learning the language than they would otherwise. Uh, <clears throat> this next one is VoiceThread. This, as far as a collaborative tool, this is probably my favorite collaborative tool. And one of the reasons why I feel that way is that VoiceThread combines any multimedia presentation that you've done with the ability to comment on that presentation asynchronously. So what that means is that I can do it at home while someone else is looking at my presentation and some, uh, or in the morning at another time, right? So I'm going to show you this little video. It is really pretty cool. It has an unfortunate affiliation, and that is with Penn State. Now you can ask to teach an online version of that class. How can you recreate the same kind of verbal interaction in an online class when your students won't be online at the same time? Welcome to VoiceThread, simply speaking. VoiceThread is a cloud-based application that allows you to upload many different types of media, such as images, videos, documents, and presentations, into a central place for an asynchronous group conversation. Once you have put your media into VoiceThread, it works like a slideshow. You can then share this VoiceThread with others by either sending them the link or embedding it in a web page, as you might do with a YouTube video. Those that you share it with can then make comments on any of the content in your VoiceThread at any time. They can make comments either by microphone, webcam, phone, text, or by uploading an audio file. These comments then appear in the voice thread so that all of those with access can review the comments as well as see who made them. With this functionality, it's easy to see the many different uses for voice thread in teaching and learning. For example, you could utilize voice thread for these learning activities, critiques, 
reflection, project collaboration, presentations, topic discussions, and more. For example, you could have students work in pairs to present two different sides of a social issue. Other students could watch their presentation and insert their own questions or comments via voice, video, or text. Okay, I'm going to stop it there. Because the rest of it is just an ad for uh, Penn State. Now, all Penn State uh, oh, faculty, staff, and students... See what I mean? Okay. So we don't care about Penn State, especially right now. <laughs> okay. And then the, the uh, next tool is, is uh, a tool that allows you to... By the way, there's an app for this. So if you have an iPhone, there's an app for this particular one. It... You, what you do is you log into a special account, and it allows you to make what's called a flog. That is a phone uh, webcast. So you just call in, and just like you're leaving a voicemail, you just start talking, and it can be an, an instructional podcast like a radio show. And then you can, after you download it to this particular website, you can get an embed code and put it so it plays on your website. So you can have your own... Uh, uh, radio show, if you want to think of it in that way. And that's called iPadio. Okay. And then the, the last thing that I wanted to show you was Vimeo. Vimeo is really a, a cool uh, hosting place. It's like YouTube. And so like YouTube, there's all sorts of content here. But it is a place that's free where students can upload their videos. And if you get the basic account... You get uh, 500 megabytes of storage, and I can't remember how much bandwidth they give you. But you can get do one HD movie and two regular movies per month. So uh, if you have individual student accounts, that wouldn't be a problem. So it's a place where you can host a video and have an embed code so that you can either play it on your website or other people can actually go to Vimeo and look up the, the title to your particular presentation. And there's some really, really good stuff on here. And that's, that's Vimeo. So all these web uh, 2.0 tools, it can be overwhelming. I get a newsletter that has three new tools coming to my email every day. So... It's exploded. There's so much stuff out there. And if you want to think of it in terms of business, what's really going on is all of these free tools are moving toward not being free. So what's, what's happening, new things come online, other things you start paying for. So it's kind of like you're on this treadmill constantly looking for what's new and free, for, especially for educators, and... Uh, trying to incorporate that into the classroom. And it's not an easy task. So uh, these tools that, I, that I've shown you, all of those are monetized in some way. So the basic account is free, but everything else you pay for. So uh, one way that I found is to go to this particular website and sign up for the... Oh, where'd it go? Here it is. It's called Free Technology for Teachers. Sign up and get that, that email so you get the new stuff coming in all the time. And if you don't have a chance to look at it, create a folder and save those, those emails that come in because this guy does a pretty good job of collecting those things as we go. All right. So what are you going to do about it? Are you going to go back to your classroom and, and your response to intervention is going to be the same old, same old? I hope not, right? Your response to intervention should be something entirely different. So take a risk. Try it out. The most difficult student you'd be surprised at turns the tables on instruction. You'll get the most reluctant student uh, wanting to use these tools. Thank you.